So this song, Tutu Maramba, is a Brazilian folk song and lullaby. And follow the lesson for free and pick up the free sheet music. This is part of a collection of beginner pieces I'm putting together um, as a supplement to my Volume 1 and Volume 2 method book. So just follow the link in the description and grab the PDF for free. This piece is pretty much just the melody and some bass notes. Uh, but very nice melody, and it's a lullaby, so not too fast, not too too exciting here. Um, I think that, that the the title and the the words to the song kind of refer to like a night monster kind of uh, character in Brazilian folklore, but uh, I couldn't find too much information on it. Uh, so it's like a lullaby, but it's, it has a little bit of a um, uh, friendly but scary in nature. Uh, that parents would you know sing to their children so obviously uh, when you're playing a piece with such a strong melody um, and such as this which is mainly just melody um, you want to practice that melody on its own without the bass notes just to make sure that you're getting the phrasing the way you want it you can play it nice and smoothly <laughs> that also gives you some time to work on the right and left hand fingering. In the right hand, um, I'd recommend just for, if you're a beginner using my um, volume one or two method book, I'd recommend you just pretty much alternate with I am the whole time. So you can start off with the I finger and just keep alternating one after the other until you get to the end of the phrase and then start with I again so that this string crossing feels good from the E to the A. Um, and then just, just keep alternating. If you're a more advanced player, you can throw in the A finger. That would be totally natural here. You know, throwing it in so that the string crossings work out differently, but, but really um, alternating I am works just fine here as if you were playing a scale. Again, um, you're aiming for a nice legato sound, a nice arches to the melody. So you're just trying to like really refine that as much as possible. In the second half of the piece there, you can, you can have some, some growth and start off a little softer if you like. In terms of the left hand fingering, there's not too much to, to discuss. As with my other method books, um, using the fourth finger on D and G is, is important. So I think we can just do a walkthrough of the piece at this point. I, although the piece is in 4-4 four, four time, I think of it more in cut time. Um, so you can think of it in 4-4. Four, four. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1. Uh, but I, I really do feel it more just as two beats per bar. So just feeling the first beat and the third beat. just kind of feeling that uh, but you can experiment with that I think once you get the, the piece flowing a little bit you might want to feel it more in cut time okay so we're starting off with two and then playing with three so that this is nice and legato across these two notes so we're not jumping a finger over
start, we're starting with I again and doing the two three so that that string crossing feels good. We could work out the fingering differently so that each string crossing works out with in that way. But that's not really practical, is it? Usually we want to pick just like some some moments that we feel like it's important to have um, a right hand fingering that is perfect for the situation, but then we just apply a fingering concept and play through the rest. In this particular case, if you practice scales, you should be used to doing I am regardless of the string crossing. Therefore, playing with I am through the piece makes a lot of sense, but at certain points, you could just choose to start with that I am. In the second half, you can start with either finger, it doesn't really matter. You can drop down the, the dynamic little level and, and grow a little bit here. That's the first time where there's a fretted bass note, so uh, so don't ignore the bass though. And we're using three on A at the end because. It goes back to the beginning and we have that fingering there. So sometimes we alter the fingering to make sure that it works out for what's coming next. The only section in this piece that I would, you know, just probably discuss left hand technique with a student um, would probably be measure 12. Um, if the student has good left hand alignment, as in the knuckles are parallel um, with the strings here, and they're not, you know, tucked like this, so they're at an angle, but they've swung that knuckle around and they're all aligned nicely then this should be easy. If a student's hand position is a little off, you know, they, they'll reach for that F sharp. So make sure that your hand is swung around in this kind of one finger per fret technique. And then back to the third finger because we repeat. So D, C, L, Fine, uh, Da Capo, L, Fine, we go back to the beginning and play until the Fine at the, at the final bar line. Pretty straightforward little piece, just a really nice little Brazilian uh, melody. And, um, and like I said, this is a supplement to my Volume 1 and Volume 2 method book. So if you're working through those books and you want some extra repertoire, I think this one will be, will be enjoyable.